despite being available in the market for some time now and being very popular with amateur radio operators, there's a lot of confusion and misconceptions about the Nano VNA, one of which is that it needs to be calibrated every time you use it. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Nano VNA. We're going to run through the calibration procedure, and I'll show you how you can save your calibration and recall that at a later date so you can make the same measurements again and again. Folks are often intimidated by the Nano VNA because of its capabilities. You can see that there's a lot of different measurements on this screen. We can toggle those on and off to make the screen easier to read. Also, a lot of folks may not understand some of the terminology used in the Nano VNA, and we're going to break that down to show how we can calibrate and then make simple measurements with this useful device. Okay, so let's take a few minutes to talk about the Nano VNA. This is a Nano VNA H4, which means it has a 4-inch screen. It's actually 3.8 inches, so it's not quite 4. This Nano VNA is from banggood.com, and I'll have a link and I believe a coupon code below that you can check out. But anyhow, when you check this out, you'll see that we have two ports here, port 1 and port 2. On some Nano VNAs, this will be marked channel 0 and channel 1. What's important to understand is that this is your S11 measurement, and this is your S21 measurement. An S11 measurement means a signal comes out of this port, and then a certain portion of that signal is reflected back and measured. So it comes out of port 1 and back into port 1. When you take a look at this one, it's measured or marked S21. So that means that a signal comes out of port 1 and then is measured in port 2 via port 1. So this will allow you to do through measurements. You can connect a device in line between this port and that port and get measurements for gain or loss. It's pretty handy for measuring things like filters. On this Nano VNA, our ports are SMA female connectors, and you can see those here. Also, there's some controls on this Nano VNA that I want to talk about. On the top, you have an SD card slot, which I have an SD card placed in there, an on-off switch, and then a jog dial button that you can push down to activate, or you can move things like this cursor from left to right. On the bottom of the Nano VNA, we have a USB-C port that is used to charge or connect this to computers so you can use computer-based software to do your measurements. Right now, we are using this Nano VNA in its default configuration. And as a result, you can see different parameters here that show that errors, error checking has been applied. This capital C0 means that we are using a calibration stored in setting 0. One of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to show that we can activate the menu and we can adjust the display to make it a little bit easier to read. Right now we have four traces on. So when I turn this display on, I can go into here, into trace, and then I have various traces that are visible. For example, trace three is visible. I can go ahead and turn this off and that is a phase measurement. When I turn that off, it cleans the screen up a little bit, and I can see that the measurement has gone away, and now we only have three traces. We have our S11 log mag. So I can manipulate this to show different things. I have it marked as active right now, trace zero. I can go back, and then I can change the format, and I can pick different things here. For example, I can pick SWR and that will allow me to do SWR measurements. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to connect this dummy load that I built. And this will allow us to take an SWR measurement. Okay, now that it's connected, let's take a look. Now this is off the chart, and we can adjust that. But as I move this along, you can see that we're getting various SWR values at the top. And that's because this is reacting or changing with frequency. By going into the menu, I can go into display, and then I can adjust my scale. And that's my scale per division. So for example, if I went and I changed this scale division setting to 10 units per division, you can now see our SWR at various data points. Okay, before we do our calibration, there's one other thing I wanted to show. When you come into the Nano VNA and activate your menu, you can come down to Stimulus. Under Stimulus, there's a setting called Sweep Points, which is right here. 
Under stimulus, there's a setting called sweep points right here. Sweep points are the number of data points that cross your span. Now for this particular configuration, we are set to go from 50 kilohertz to 900 megahertz, which is quite a span. We're currently set for 101 data points. So there's significant space between each one of those data points. I wanna come in here and then I wanna change this to 401 which maximizes the number of data points that are taken across the span. One thing that I do want to mention is that the more data points you use, the longer it will take to do a sweep. This Nano VNA came in this pretty fancy box and it comes with a bunch of different accessories, one of which is a USB cable. And this is what we would use to connect to our computer or if we wanted to charge our Nano VNA. It comes with this stylus, which is shaped like a guitar pick. I don't particularly care for that, and I just use a typical standard stylus here. Down here comes with the USB-C to USB-C cord in the event that your computer doesn't have standard USB. Also, it comes with two small coaxial cables. These are for connecting devices to your Nano VNA. They are used as part of the calibration and you'll see that. It also comes with a standard for through measurements and this would allow us to connect our two cables together. It also comes with a set of reference standards. This is a load. I believe this is an open and this is a short. Now your Nano VNA is as only good as your calibration. Your calibration is only as good as your reference standards. 50 ohm load. This is an open load and this is a short load. And I'll show you how we use those to do a calibration. Now we went through some of these settings because we want to be able to configure our Nano VNA for our calibration and then save that for recalling at a later date. So when we take a look at our Nano VNA, the first thing that we want to do is we want to adjust the span for something that we actually want to measure. So for example, in amateur radio, I often do a sweep from the 40 meter band through the 10 meter band. So I want to adjust my sweep to account for that. So I'm going to go ahead and activate my menu. So from the top menu, what I want to do is I want to pick stimulus. And it's going to ask for my start frequency. Now I'm going to pick something before the 40 meter band, which is considered 7 megahertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick 6.5. And then I'm going to click this M for megahertz. And you can see the start of my span has now changed from 50 kilohertz to 6.5 megahertz. And then I'm going to end. So I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to go pick my stop frequency. And I'm going to change this to 30 megahertz, which is just above the 10 meter band. And then you can see that that has changed here as well. You can also see an indication for our bandwidth and then we're using 401 points. You can also see over here that our capital C has changed to a lowercase c and it is green as opposed to white. This lets us know that the display and our test parameters have changed from the calibrations that were stored in our Nano VNA. So what I wanna do now is I wanna come over here I want to activate the menu and then I'm going to go back to the top menu and I'm going to pick the calibrate option. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my calibrations. And then what I want to do is I want to pick this calibrate option. And the first one is for an open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my open standard, which is right here, and then I'm going to connect that to the Nano VNA. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is when you actually do these calibrations, some folks will say, well, just leave it off and it was going to measure as an open. Your reference plane is the end of this port. And I want to make sure that all my calibrations are standard. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the calibration standard itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and click open. And that is going to run. Once it's done, I get a checkbox letting me know that it's complete and it's asking us to put on the short standard. So let me take this off and then I'm gonna apply this standard, which is the short. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this option and we're gonna wait for it to run. As it's running, there's a thin blue line that goes across the top of the screen. That is complete, and what I'm going to do now is remove this and apply the load. It 
the load standards on. And you can see the blue line going across. And that's done. Now it's asking us to do the isolation calibration. When you do this, if you have two loads, you can put one on each port. If you don't, leave it set for the original port, port one. And then we want to go ahead and highlight isolation. Now you can see the blue bar running across. Now we could be done if we were only going to do reflection measurements like SWR on port one or S11. But because we're going to do a through test, we're going to go ahead and take this off and complete our calibration. So in order to do this, I want to take my two calibration cables and I want to connect my through standard. And then I want to go ahead and I want to connect this to my nano VNA. Okay, now you can see that that's connected. And then I'm going to pick through. The blue bar goes across the top. Okay, now our calibration is complete. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick done. I'm going to hit back. And then I'm going to hit save. Right now you can see these slots are empty. I'm going to pick one. Now what I want to do is I want to show you over here, it's showing us capital C in white. So that means that we're calibrated to these particular parameters and we are in slot one. When I highlight this, I can go back and then I go to recall. And you can see there are two calibrations stored, the one that we're currently on and we just did, and then the original calibration. So if I pick the original calibration, you can see we go back to where we were. If I pick this one, then I go back to our calibration that was just completed. Anytime I want to use this calibration, that's all I have to do. Okay, so here's our calibrated Nano VNA. We don't have anything hooked up. What you can see is that marker one is set over here, showing infinite SWR, and that's because we have an open connection. Now, when we do tests, we concern ourselves with something called the reference plane, and we talked about that earlier. Right now, the reference plane is the end of this SMA connector. Let's say I want to go ahead and I want to connect an extension cable up. So now we've set up this extension cable, and it just has an open on it as well. So you can see over here, our marker has moved. And that is moved because we have adjusted our reference plane. So when you take a look at this, you can see from our top marker, we are at the high end of our sweep right down here at 30 megahertz. Now, the higher you go in frequency, the more of a difference a short cable like this is going to make. But if this cable was, say, 20 feet long, it would be a huge difference here and less of a difference down at the lower portion of our sweep. So you can see as I move slowly through the, through the sweep in the reverse direction, we get back to close to where we were before with our infinite SWR. So what I can do to electronically move my reference plane from here to the end of this cable or any other cable that you're using. So what I want to do is I want to go into Menu. I want to go to display and then under display I want to pick scale and under scale I have e-delay or electronic delay and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick that and I can put in say 1000 picoseconds and you can see what happened is, is that moved my marker closer back to the original point on our Smith chart. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick E-Delay 1500 picoseconds. And that gets me close enough to where I need to be. It's still a little bit low and I could do some fine tuning, but I think that illustrates the point that I'm trying to make. So hopefully what we've done is we've shown you how to use your Nano VNA to adjust the screen, set test parameters, perform a calibration, and then compensate for any electrical delay that we may be encountering. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.